everybody! Today, Rado runs through Fortune and Glory, the cliffhanger game. But before we begin, please turn on your subtitles to the Klingon channel so that when I have an oops moment, you'll know about it. Hey everybody, Kimberly here, and I have got a run through for Fortune and Glory, the cliffhanger game, ready to go. Now, this is a game that suits one to eight players, has a competitive and a cooperative variant, but right now, what I'm going to show you is a two-player competitive game. Now, in this game, players are not going to be directly attacking each other. That is against the rules. But there are ways to sabotage your fellow players as you try to reach these artifacts in these locations across the globe. And you want to do it to get to 15 fortune back to your home city location first to win the game. So let me show you what's out here. This is the map. This is where players are navigating, trying to find these artifacts. You're going to see down here is the ring of the golden mummy. And you're going to find that up in the Pacific Northwest. Down here is the mask of the gods hidden in the heart of Africa in a really tough jungle area. You have to do exploration in tough jungle. Up here in Russia, we've got the Book of Lost Souls. It's pretty much near Moscow, where you've got one of the characters. Uh, my character over here is in New York. Uh, she's Sharon Hunter. And then lastly, we've got, um, I said the Mask of the Gods, the Gauntlet of Power over here in China. Now, these are just randomly determined at the beginning of the game with a locations deck, and they are paired with their uh, challenge. So. Players really want to reach these uh, these places. They want to reach these artifacts because this is just an exciting, edge of your seat, action packed, high voltage adventure game where players are going to grab gear and enlist allies so that they can go out on these adventures. They're going to come across events and all kinds of um, you know, adversaries. Now we are in the 1930s, and so there are going to be uh, possibly uh, monsters that we come across and Nazi enemies. So there's just a ton of fun to be had here. Well, we have two different currencies. We've got fortune and we've got glory. So I've got these here. Uh, fortune are the yellow or gold ones and glory is your blue. Now this is my little tray. So this doesn't come with the game, but everything else you see out here does come with the game. And I've got some things that are just slightly off camera because this is a big, big table hog. So you've got to have a lot of space for this game, but boy, does it immerse you in this world. Now I want to show you uh, my characters. I've got Sharon here. I told you this was who I'm playing with. These are their character cards and you've got a couple things. First off, all I want to say about this until I get into some of the details is that um, my character starts the game with an ally card. Um, all your allies are super loyal to you. So all I did was just draw an ally card and I put that um, down here right here and I got a driver. So this driver is going to help me in driving tests to roll more adventure dice. Uh, and I also am going to gain extra movement each turn. So this driver is really nice. Now over here, I've got Lewis. Lewis is playing Dr. Zukov. He is a master of science and begins. You'll see here, you always have your start city in Moscow. And then um, there are a couple different key features and uh, bonuses that this character is going to have because all the characters are asymmetrical. You're also going to see down here that there are four different stats. You're going to be rolling for combat, cunning, agility, and lore. There might be a defense and there is a health. And if you get KO'd, you have to go back to your home city. You uh, essentially heal up all of your damage, uh, but you're going to have to roll to see how much stuff you lose because you can get KO'd and you could just come right back into the game, but you do have have a, a penalty of sorts. This is going to be that, that uh, cutie a flying frog uh, disc here because this is definitely that update, uh, reprint, revision of Fortune and Glory, the cliffhanger game. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to start into it because this game is all about, again, immersing yourself in this world and going on an adventure. So I've got the competitive game round and just as easy, you've got the cooperative game round. So I really appreciate these uh, aids they've got here to help you uh, walk through each of the uh, rounds and what phases you have to do. So the very first phase is all players roll a die and whoever rolls the highest takes the first player marker. Any rolls of one for the initiative, get a free event card and then you ready all of your activated cards. So let's get to it. I'm going to have over here, I'm going to have uh, Lewis on this side. He's going to roll. He got a five and I got a one. Ah, okay. So there we go. As it said here, 
Uh, if you roll a one, you are going to uh, get a free event card. So let's get that free event card for me. But we're going to put this guy over here with Lewis. He's going to have that. And we're going to put the dice back. So let's draw an event card. This is so exciting. I mean, already. I mean, first phase, haven't even really gone anywhere yet. And I am already doing something. So the event card, you just simply draw the top uh, card here. So it's too close. Play to force a test just rolled to be entirely re-rolled. This may be used on yourself or another hero or a villain. This is a fantastic card to have. And I, I'm simply gonna keep my cards face up. You should keep your event cards face down, especially if they are cards that uh, offer players a, a chance to sabotage other players. But since this is all information here for everybody, I'm just going to keep it face up here and I'm going to keep Sharon's cards here. I'm going to keep uh, Dr. Zukov's cards up here so we can see everything. And you'll probably notice too, I've got all the cards over here. I've got some dice and some wounds and some chits and stuff out here. I've got all the artifacts on the side. And then these are going to be the cards that we draw for enemies, for Nazi enemies. And then any of the artifacts are just replaced with the uh, top card on the deck. So those are going to be just slightly off over there because we've got, oh, I've got a lot of these little figures too. So I've got, here are my uh, Nazi minis, and then I've got the mobster minis. So yes, very, very cool. Um, so these guys might come out uh, and they, they might uh, pose a danger to uh, both of us. But now we're gonna get into it. So after initiative phase, we move to the second phase, which is move. Starting with the first player, that's gonna be Lewis moving to me next. Each hero rolls a D6 and may move up to the amount rolled. Any ones for movement get a free event card, just like in the initiative phase. And you must fight an enemy henchman in your space. Um, and we'll talk about cliffhangers later. So we've got up here, Dr. Zukov is in Moscow. That's his starting place. And I'm over here in New York. And really the goal here is to grab those artifacts. You wanna go on those artifacts, you wanna face the dangers and you wanna grab them because they have, as you can see here, um, they have this. This is going to be your fortune. And characters or players need to collect 15 or more and get back to their starting city to win the game. So this is gonna be your amount of fortune that you earn when you go to that particular artifact and defeat the requisite number of challenge, which is in the bottom card that are randomly paired together. So we have got to get to these places. Now, I'm gonna have Lewis roll the die, and he is going to probably just be moving one space over to Russia to try and get the Book of Lost Souls. He was in town, heard some rumors about this, uh, this, this tomb, perhaps? So he's gonna roll, and he got a one! <laughs> Well, one is great because that's all he needs to move. Now, when you're in a city, you can move out of the city into land. If you are in a city that's on, uh, has a port symbol, you can move into the side of the ocean that the port symbol is on. You don't have to move into land to then get into the ocean. And you are essentially crossing those black lines. So to move out of the city into Russia, he could do that, or into Eastern Europe, and that's gonna be one space. So he moves the one space, but because he rolled a one, he is going to get an event card. Let's see what he gets. Here's his event. It says, with my eyes closed, this is a mental event. Play anytime a hero is collecting glory, that hero collects an extra three glory. Or play to force any single die just rolled to be immediately re-rolled. Trust me, trust me, I got this. Hey, you can see this right there. I mean, part of the fun here is just always looking at those pictures and really just getting into the flavor text. I always have people say like their special line that they have on their character card whenever they get their character and tell everybody, here's what I am at the table. So now we've got uh, Lewis here. He's got, with my eyes closed, he can play to collect extra glory. Again, these cards sometimes give players a chance to help themselves or hurt other players, potentially, because um, a lot of times it just asks you to re-roll, which means that re-roll could be successful, um, especially if you wanted it to not be successful as an opponent, because we are fighting each other. We're racing to get all of our adventuring done before the other player. So he's gonna hang on to that, um, and that was essentially his move. We are now going to go to my move. Players are gonna fully do the move phase before they move into the adventuring phase, which you always wanna go into the adventuring phase right away, but you have to wait for everybody else to go. 
Um, so I'm going to grab a different die. I'm not sure I want that one. Because if I want to move out of New York and I want to get down to here or over here, I am going to need a higher roll. Um, but I do have an advantage when I'm going across the ocean. And I do have an extra move with my driver. So I'm hoping that I roll well here so I can get out of New York and over to one of these artifacts nearby. Well, <laughs> I rolled a one. So what that means is I am going to, uh, well, first off, I want to tell you about an alternative way of moving simply because I rolled two ones for my first movement. Um, now, it, it didn't necessarily, you know, uh, interfere with Lewis's plans, but here's something. Now, you can play with this variant, and this variant is something I played with, and I've also played with the original rules, which I am showing you the original base rule set in this competitive game. But one of the uh, alternatives is every player can choose to have four movement, and you can move up to four just because that's your movement turn. And if you roll the die, and or, or you can choose to roll the die. And if you roll the die, you would get an event card on a one or two, not just a one. But that means if you want a five or six, you have to roll the die and you have to risk it. So there's kind of like a, you can have up to four movement just as an automatic choice, or you can roll and risk it. So I'm playing simply with the every player rolls and they get the amount of movement that's stated on the die. Um, but I've played both ways and I'll tell you in the final thoughts which one I prefer, which one I, I think is uh, maybe a, a little bit more my gaming style. So I'm gonna move, I'm going to move, I have at least um, one with the one roll and then I gain one extra movement and I'm going to show you my character here, Sharon. She is a daring photographer. Um, she is an American. And it says here, it costs you one less movement to enter any sea space. Minimum of one. And flying between cities costs you one less fortune than normal. And you can also fly between cities if you pay fortune. But we don't have any fortune yet. We have no glory either. We haven't really done anything. So I'm going to get two movement. And it's going to take me one out of New York. And then I'm going to walk across and I'm going to go one here to the Pacific Northwest. That was really fortunate. And I only got there because I uh, got my, um, my driver. My driver was able to do that. Okay, so that means because I rolled a one as well, I'm going to get my event card just like Lewis got his event card. And I already got my too close event card because I rolled a one in the initiative. So let's see what I've got. So I'm over here. I am going to be able to go adventuring this turn. I really had hoped to get a big, big roll and then walked across the ocean and come down here to the heart of Africa because this has a really good dynamite temple or area where I can get an artifact that's like a lot of fortune. But maybe that can be my secondary goal. Here we go. Yet another, this is an event for me. It's called Malaria. Event, terrain, disease. Play on any hero, enemy, or villain in a jungle space, they take D6 hits. Yikes. Or play while in a jungle space during your adventure phase to gain three glory. This is great. I'm going to again add that to Sharon Hunter's location. You can have as many event cards as you'd like, but you have to have no more, or you can have no more than three uh, gear cards and three ally cards. Uh, so, so three of each of those is the max you can have for your characters. So again, my events I would normally keep face down, but because we are all here together, you and me, um, I'm going to keep them uh, face up for me. So that's going to end our move phase. Then we go to adventure phase. So this is starting with the first player, then clockwise, each hero interacts with the space, the city, or the adventure they're in, Heroes racing each other trade off doing so in an adventure. So this is where characters or players can be in the same location fighting for the same artifact and they will go back and forth pressing their luck, pushing further and further into the location, trying to get the artifact before the other player. And there's a real race off to that. But we are in separate locations. We are in separate continents. Um, right now, Lewis is going for the Book of Lost Souls and I am going for the Ring of the Golden Mummy. So again, turn player, we've got Lewis, this is on him. He's gonna start with his adventure phase. He is in a location with an adventure, which means he wants to go on it. So I'm gonna show you this down here. Again, these are randomly put together, but the Book of Lost Souls requires four danger, four danger to get to the Book of Lost Souls. 
These cards are random. And right now we're going to ignore if there's any words down here. Right now there aren't any text. And then we're also going to ignore the symbols because these would come into play in our competitive or cooperative version. So we aren't going to look at any of those. We're just going to look at the four and the four. And that means there are four fortune to be had um, if he can trade that at a city. And then that's going to be for danger. So here's how it works. This is the danger deck. Now you say, oh no, I can see that danger right there on the top. Well, what you do is you stack all the cards up at the beginning of the game and you are going to take the bottom card so that you never know what the top, you never know what the card is that you are going to be facing as a danger. It's supposed to be a surprise. And you never want to see the other side because on the back is uh, a cliffhanger. So cards are double-sided and they're paired as an adventure. So I'm going to draw this up. I'm going to take this card out. And again, this is going to be Dr. Zukov. He goes into the maze of caves and it's a danger underground puzzle. It could be worth three glory if he passes it, but he's got to go through a test first. He's got to either choose cunning or lore. And this is the threshold of the die roll he has to have. And this is how many successes. So... Here's the really cool thing about Dr. Zukov. He has what's called a scientist ability. It lets you add two adventure dice during any tech or puzzle test. So this is one reason why I think uh, Lewis picked this character card because in the beginning of the game, you get two characters dealt to you and you get to select the one you want. He picked this because this character has a really cool advantage in those challenges when you go into dangers. So I think he's going to do this. It's a puzzle test, so it's going to be a plus two uh, for your adventure dice. Oh, and let me keep this out here. He has to choose cunning or lore. So right now, cunning is his highest stat. That means he gets five dice. Lore is his lowest. You get two dice. He's not really that good at knowing um, like history and culture. Um, he's really, really smart because he's a master of science. He's an academic nerdy type, not necessarily the greatest on uh, fighting or defending himself. So we're going to look at that cunning and say, let's go for cunning. Now, it might be easier to catch fives instead of sixes because it's a five plus um, on that success. But cunning is just better. So he's five dice for that. Then he gets two extra dice because he is a scientist and he's doing a puzzle test. So he is now going into that very first maze of caves. He's underground. It's really scary. And we really hope we see at least one six, if not two sixes in these dice. So here we go. Here we go. Okay, so here's what happens. I got one or he got one, right? So we have the one six success. We're going to take this little marker over here and we're going to say we've got one success towards the two threshold needed. And because there was one success, you can keep rolling all the dice. So I'm gonna pick all of them up again. Now, if, if he had rolled no sixes, it would have been a fail. And he walked into the maze of caves and then it's going to turn into a cliffhanger because he did not succeed the danger. He did not pass it, but he is close. So what you're gonna do is, and if you got two sixes, you just succeed and you pass it right away. But he only got one. But that's good. So we're going to roll all of them again and hope it's a six. Yes! Oh, we got it. Oh, it's so hard. I'm not that good at rolling sixes. <laughs> okay, so we got this and he was successful twice. That was all he had to do. Barely made it. So you've got these success markers. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take one of those and you're going to turn it over. Now, this means you have successfully uh, challenged yourself and completed one danger out of the necessary number that you have at your artifact. So he's going to keep this card in front of him because this card represents his progress, but he is not done yet necessarily. He can now choose one of two things. He can choose to bed down and rest, which means he is banking his progress and he's also gaining the glory on the card. Or he can press his luck. He feels pretty confident. He was like, are you kidding me? That's one. I have to do four. I have to go through four of these cards just to get the artifact. I can press my luck. I have six health. I'm not hurt. I still have 
like, uh, I don't have, he doesn't have a card that lets him do anything cool, but he feels pretty confident. So I think he's going to press his luck and I think he's going to go one more time. I don't know if he wants to keep going. We'll see how the outcome of this is, but well, I don't know. So he's going to take the bottom card from that danger deck and he's going to get the riddle of Nardu. This is a danger, ancient puzzle. And that's even him right there. <laughs> that's his character right there. He's standing right in the middle of it. Um, and it says here, um, one of the greatest mysteries of the ancient world, you are faced with the nefarious riddle of Nardu, sealed in the stone passage and surrounded by the bones of all those that have come before you have but one way out. And it looks like, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's lore. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna fail. He's gonna fail. I, I don't know. We'll see. It is worth five glory. Hey, but he needs two. He needs two successes of sixes. Oh, good grief. Okay, but because it is a puzzle, because it is a puzzle, he gets two more dice. So instead of his measly two lore, he's going to get four. Now, again, we're going to do the same thing. If he just gets two straight off, great. He passed the riddle of Nardu. He needs at least one to keep rolling. <gasps> Oh, he got one, he got one, he got one, he got one. This is good, we're doing okay. Please, please, please. <laughs> it rolled off the table, so one success. He's gonna roll all four dice again, and hopefully he gets a six. Oh, he got it! Okay, 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 that was almost nothing. One, two, three, six. Okay, so here we go. I am feeling so on edge. I am feeling so, it's just like exhilarating. It just is just exhilarating. So he passed the riddle of the Nardu. And so he's gonna take this, he's gonna flip that over and he's gonna put that disc back. And he is going to say, maybe, just maybe I should stop while I'm ahead because if he presses his luck and he fails the third card, he is going to keep his progress with the markers, but he's going to lose the opportunity to gain the glory. And the glory is how you buy all the cool stuff when you go back to the city. And he wants allies, he wants gear, he wants common items. He needs to be able to heal up maybe, and it all costs glory. So he's gonna say, I wanna bed down. I wanna bed down and I'm just gonna bank my progress. So he takes these two markers and he keeps them in front of himself. He's done two of the four necessary. And he is going to say, I'm turning these cards back in for a total of eight glory. And he is going to put these on the top of the deck because that's what you do. You take the cards from the danger and you put them on top of the deck. And he's going to take eight of these glory because that was how much it said. Yes, yes, yes. And he's got his glory right over here. And that is going to be his end of his adventure turn. He's going to say when you bed down, that's essentially it and you're stopping, but he's got two of the four necessary. And boy, was that close. Boy, was that close. Now it's me. I'm going to be over here. I'm all the way in the Pacific Northwest and I want to go into an adventure. So that means, because this space right here, um, if you're in one of two other spaces, you have other choices. If you're in a city, you can do city. You have to draw a city card first, and then you do your city actions. And if you're kind of in, um, you know, no man's land where there's really no symbol, um, then you are going to roll a die to see if you get an event or if you fight an enemy. But I'm over here. I've really heard about the Ring of the Golden Mummy. This is sounding like super, super cool. I'm really excited. I, on the other hand will get a reward of four, uh, this is worth four um, fortune when I go and turn it in, but I only have to go through three challenges. So I think that this is a really good opportunity for me to maybe catch up with him uh, and, and get back maybe with my artifacts sooner than he is. So I'm gonna say, let's go, let's do it. I'm gonna reach into the bottom of the deck and I'm gonna draw this card out and it says, oh no, Underwater diving. Am I good at cunning? I'm okay. I'm okay at everything. I'll have to show you my cart. This is danger tech water. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, look at this guy. I think, I think he probably, <laughs> if he'd pressed it, if he'd pressed his luck, he might have been able to nab this card as well because he's really good. He has a keyword tech. So he kind of made a mistake maybe in, in dropping out early. Um, water. It says here, um, your search has led you to the water. 
Um, suit up in your heavy-duty diving suit and descend into the dark depths below the surface. Okay, I'm ready. And it makes sense. I love it when it makes sense because I'm over in the Pacific Northwest and I heard that maybe it's like off the coast of, you know, Oregon or Washington State. Um, so I am going to keep this card right out here. And I have cunning. So I'm going to look at my skills. My skills down here, I have three, 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 and three. I am a well-balanced, uh-oh, not much defense, uh, but I have a lot of health, which is really good. So I am simply going to grab my three dice I have for cunning, and I'm going to roll, and I need uh, five plus, and I need two of those. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, come on, come on. <laughs> Bring it on. So I got two fives, which means that I got my two marks. So I essentially put those on my card. I, re I reached my threshold. I'm gonna flip that one over. I have done one of my um, one of my challenges. I've done one of them. So let me keep it over here for now. Um, and then I'm gonna say, let's press it. Let's press my luck. I totally wanna go into a second one. So I'm gonna draw the bottom card here. And it's a car chase. Yes, danger, driving, chase. Mm, outmaneuver and outrun the speeding car. Yes, please. Agility, I need two successes and a five plus. And hello, hello, hello. I have a driver with me. So I get to roll plus two on any driving test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna get, for my uh, agility, I get three dice and then I get plus two because of my driver and I need two five pluses. Oh, wow. That is so not me, but yes, please. I'll take them, I'll take all of them. So I got two fives, I got two sixes. I more than succeeded in my driving test, so I got this. Now, do I want to press my luck? If I press my luck and I go for my third card, I can succeed, and then I'll gain all the glory and I'll gain the artifact, this down one down here, and it will be amazing. But I could risk it and lose it in a cliffhanger, but I really wanna press my luck. I really do. I want to see what happens. I want to try to get this challenge. Um, oh, okay. So I came across the last the last uh, room in this underwater uh, cave area called the Secret Ritual, and it's a danger occult sneak. Um, these again are going to be keywords for when uh, you have cards like I did for Driver. But here it says we've stumbled into a clandestine ritual of the dark uh, arts. Um, sneak by under, um, uh, oh, so undetected or break up the party to get the, um, to the bottom of what's going on here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So do I want to agility four, four times, which uh, my agility is still just three dice or do I want to fight? I can choose if it says, or now fighting says you must fight the order of the crimson hand. So let me look at who the crimson hand is. These cards over here are going to be your just set cards for mobsters, for Nazi soldiers. And when you flip them over, you have zombies, and then you've got the Order of the Crimson Hand. So it says here that they have two fight dice and four health, but they also gain a fight dice for each wound they have taken. So they're gonna get stronger the more bloodied they get. But I feel like I might have Boy, I feel like I might have more of a chance with fighting, but then again, my combat is the same as my um, as my uh, agility. And if I need four dice here to kill them, which is their health, but I need four successes on a four, five, or six, which is how you fight a win or a success for a wound is a four, five, or six, then I think maybe what's better for me to do is the secret ritual. As much as I'd love to fight, I think I might not be the best fighter at this moment. I don't have too much. I can also play to force a test just re-rolled to be entirely re-rolled. And so I need to remember that I've got too close. But I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to try for the agility and I'm going to go. So I've only got three agility. Uh, because it's not any kind of special keyword that uh, that I've got anytime, anywhere else. So please just get a four or higher on one of these dice. 
Okay, so I got one success and I can keep rolling. So let's keep doing this. Oh goodness, I got another success so I can keep rolling. Whew, here we go. Yes, okay. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. <laughs> so I got my successes that were necessary for my agility. I got either a four, five, or six, and I got it four times. So I'm going to put these dice back over here and I succeeded. So now I'm looking at, I've got three successes of danger for my artifact location. I will take all of these and put them back here and I will get all of the glory. So I'm going to get three glory plus two is five plus three is eight. So I'm going to get eight glory. I'm going to put these cards on the top of the deck. I've got this guy, one, two, three, and there's my five, so I'm gonna keep this, and I'm gonna put that right here. And now I get the artifact, because I did all of them. And when you get to the end of your danger, your adventuring is over, you don't do more than you need to. You will just simply accomplish what that is. So I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna put those two skulls down there, and I'm gonna put this in my play area. And now I have to go back to a city, either a, a minor city or a major city. Minor cities are kind of silver or gray. Major cities are that kind of yellow or gold. And if I trade it into a major city, I will get one more fortune that's listed here. If I go to a minor city, I just will trade it in for that amount of fortune. So I'm gonna place this and I'm gonna tuck it right here. I'm just gonna stick it underneath my pile of goods. Um, and that's gonna be the end of my adventure phase. And I'm gonna stay there. We're gonna replenish this here in a minute. So we look at the end phase. We don't have a Zeppelin in this uh, version. We are playing without the Zeppelin and without the villains to make this a little bit more streamlined. Um, those would come into play in your cooperative version or if you wanted advanced play for competitive. Check for victory. This is where you check for, do you have 15 fortune and are, are you in your home city? You win the game. Um, and then we replenish artifacts. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna grab one artifact off the top of the deck and one adventure card, and we will just simply pair them. So here's an example of the text down here that we are going to ignore for this very first game. This, again, makes things a little bit more challenging and makes things a little bit more complex, but you can just ignore that and say this takes four dangers to overcome to get five fortune because you're turning in the Sword of the Crimson Hand. Here is our new uh, card, and we are now going to find out where is this located. We just flip over a locations card. And we will find out, oh, there it is. It's in the Amazon jungle. So we're gonna put this skull right down here. This is gonna be put in the discard pile for the locations. And now this is the new space for our artifact. And that means I'm gonna have to probably uh, hightail, I'm gonna have to hoof it uh, to get down to some of these artifacts over here because right now, We've got uh, Dr. Zukov is in Russia and is, uh, you know, bedding down to hopefully finish the artifact hunting for next round. So we simply move back into that initiative phase where we're going to roll off and we do highest uh, die gets first player marker. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to roll these guys. This is Lewis. And I <laughs> he keeps first player marker and I get an event card. I am just really good at rolling those ones for event cards. So here's my event card. Just a scratch. Play when a hero or enemy is about to take a wound. Prevent that wound. Oh, that's good. That's actually really good for me because my character has no defense. So it means that there's no shield that absorbs the first point of damage every time my character would take damage, unlike Dr. Zukov, who has a defense of one. So I'm gonna add this card here to my ever-growing pile of, of goods. I'm very excited that I've got just amazing things. This is a, a physical thing, right? It's nothing, don't worry about it. Uh, and that was essentially uh, initiative phase. We go on to move phase. So here we go with moving. Um, he is going to stay where he is, but during the move phase, you always roll a die because if you roll a one, you get an event card. And event cards, as you see here, are really cool. They help you. They bring things out, they might hurt your opponents, whatever they are, they're really, really cool. So he's gonna roll the die. <laughs> wow, I mean, it's just kind of stunning. He's gonna stay where he is because if he leaves, he will lose all of his progress. 
He is inside whatever kind of temple or like location he's in to get the Book of Lost Souls. He has his progress. He doesn't want to lose these two by stepping away. So he stays where he is, but he also gets to draw that event card. So let's see what he gets for his event card. Blizzard! Play on any hero. This is a weather terrain event. Play on any hero, enemy, or villain in an ice space. They take d6 hits. Or you can play while you're in an ice space and gain three glory. Where am I? I'm in a mountain space. He's in an ice space. Well, let's do it. Let's have him play this event card and he's going to gain three glory. So there we go. He's going to discard it. He's going to go one, two, three um, of the glory, right? The blue. And he's now got uh, 11 that he can use when he goes to town, hopefully, or city to, to buy some really cool stuff. Okay, that was just his move. Now it comes to me moving. And again, I need to really, again, move, move, move. But it looks like I can maybe skirt down here and then come up and get into the Amazon jungle if I want. Okay, here I go. Four. So I get four plus my driver is five. And I also go through uh, ocean or, or sea spaces for one less minimum of one. So let's see if I can get to the heart of Africa. If I go here and I go one, two, three, four, I can do it. I think I might come here because it's less danger and way more fortune. Yes. Okay. So I go one across the space, one into the Gulf of Mexico, one less in the South Atlantic because of my ability, and then I come right up on shore here, and I am in the heart of Africa, but I'm also in dense jungle, and this is going to be dangerous for me because I don't find my artifact right away. So I'm gonna have to spend some time, you know, cutting through uh, the jungle with, uh, you know, a big, a big sword or something. That's my movement. I moved one less than I needed to because I got the plus one. Um, but essentially it was good because I needed to get across the ocean, essentially. So that was awesome. That was move. Now we're going to move into adventure phase. You're going to start with the first player and then you activate your space, city, or adventure. That's it. So he is still in the middle of his adventure and he really wants to go. He really, really, really wants to go. Okay. Um, let's just have him go. He's going to lift up this card. He's going to go. He's got to infiltrate the secret Nazi base. This is a danger Nazi sneak. This is find an entrance and sneak past the guards or fight your way in. Now I will say, oh boy, oh boy. So you have to do cunning and agility, both, and you can choose which order you wanna do them in, or you fight and you draw a Nazi enemy's card from the Nazi enemy's card deck over here. Um, I will say here, let's, let's take a look at Dr. Zukov. He's not a fighter. He's an academic. He only hits in a fight on the rolls of five or six instead of the normal four, five, or six. Now, this is just fighting when you do combat. Fight is a key word, as we saw on the card. It's not necessarily the uh, agility, cunning, and lore keywords that we've been seeing so far. Um, he can use cunning to escape a fight, which we haven't talked about escaping. Um, but I don't know, let's see here. He's got some defense. He, he, he let's see here. Uh, 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 okay, he's got cunning, he's got five. Then he has agility, which is two. That's terrible, it's a terrible combination, especially for the agility with two dice to have to get three, four hits. Maybe he just needs to fight the Nazi, but once you draw the Nazi enemy card and you choose it, that's it. Uh, gosh, this is hard because he's in the middle of this adventure. Ah, oh, boy. You know what? Let's just have him, let's just have him do the cunning and the agility. I think he's just going to do cunning agility. He doesn't have any bonuses because it's not tech and it's not puzzle. But let's have him do it first. He's going to do the cunning first, which is five dice, and he needs to roll one, five, or six. Here he, here he goes. He's just doing it. He got it. All right, so we got one. So he's going to do that, and he needs to and do this, which is four plus three times. So he's going to try this and go 
one four. Okay, he's got that. Now he needs to roll again because he got one success. Oh, he got a five. Oh my gosh, he's so close. He's so close. Come on. I'm right at the end. He's right at the end to get this. He's, he's almost snuck by. He's like, he's like, cree, cree. And then he's like one more step and he's like around the corner. And he, <laughs> he made it around the corner. So, so he's going to take this guy. And that was a success. What an exciting uh, sneak. I mean, he can't fight them, so he's going to sneak. So he succeeded in infiltrating the Nazi base. And he's going to take this, and that's going to be uh, one of his cards. He's now going to have to risk it. Does he risk the glory on this card to do the fourth one? Because he needs to get to that Book of Lost Souls. I say he does. I say he absolutely risks it. I really, really, really hope he can make th this through. Okay, here we go. Bottom card. Oh, boy. It's an airplane crash. It's the final stage. He's got to fly now. <laughs> it's a chase. Um, oh boy, this is going to be rough. This is, um, they're hot on your tail, outmaneuver the enemy, um, planes to escape. Yay, yay, okay, he needs one it, uh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> he has agility of two. He's going to take two dice. This is not a puzzle, this is not a tech, and he has to roll a six on one of these two dice. I mean, he's just crashing. There's, there's no way he's gonna make it this time. There's no way. He didn't make it. <laughs> okay, so here's what happens. <laughs> um, he failed, but you don't necessarily fail the danger just yet. What you do is you flip it over to the other side. I haven't had this an opportunity to show this to you yet. His airplane crash, he goes down. He's now on the cliffhanger. He is at a mountainside explosion. It is still a cliffhanger. It's still flying. The, the um, um, opportunity for him just got really hard, especially because it's agility. He's going to put this card here. He will keep the progress from his secret Nazi base. So he's going to put this in his pile, but he loses this card and he loses the glory because he risked going into the next adventure and now he has to face this cliffhanger in the next adventure phase. His adventure phase is over because he failed that danger, but he has one last chance. He is <laughs> crashing into the mountain and he's got to escape the burning flames of his, you know, plane. It's going to be something else, everybody. And if he can do it, if he can do it, he'll get the fourth one and he'll grab that artifact. So he is so close. He is so, he's, he's, he's gripping with his fingernails onto this mountainside. That was his adventure phase. And now it comes to my adventure phase. Now I cannot jump into this uh, green, the mask of the gods. I cannot go and look for this artifact just yet because I am in dense jungle. Now, at the, whenever you get a dense jungle, I'm going to do it right now to show you what you do. Um, in the Sword of the Crimson Hand, because it's in the Amazon jungle, you take and put two fortune underneath that particular artifact because it is worth two more because it's hard to find. It's hard to find because what you have to do as you enter this location is you have to roll a d6. And if you roll a four, five, or six, you find the uh, entrance to that artifact, the location. And if you don't, you'll take one of these exploration markers that says you will get an extra die to add to your dice. And you always need just one success of a four, five, or six. So I'm gonna roll here and see if I actually get to adventure this turn or not. And I do, I found it. I got a four, five, or six, so I am in. And I'm gonna just go straight into uh, and look for the Mask of the Gods. I am so, so ready. Okay, so here I am. I'm gonna take my card. And this one, I only need two. Take a look at this. This is great. So the Mask of the Gods paired together is going to ask me for two danger. And then I can take this and run away with my artifact. But here, I am risking. I am risking my current artifact that I found by going into another location with an artifact because there might be a chance if I die in here or if I get KO'd, I might lose the artifact I already have, which is dangerous, but I'm playing incredibly risky right now. 
I found a hidden trap. The very first step I stepped into this particular location in the heart of Africa was a trap. It says, spot the pressure plates in the floor and find a way across the deadly packed um, pattern of stones to avoid springing the trap. This will give me three glory if I can do both lore and cunning. I have three of each, which is great. This isn't a driving test. This is just a trap. So I have three dice and I need to get two fours or higher. And then next I need to roll and get one five or higher because my lore is three and my cunning is three. Here I go. I'm going to do lore first. When you do the ands, you can always pick which one you want to do first. Here we go. Fours or higher. I got one. Should have rolled cunning first because there's my five, but I didn't. I didn't do it. So I'm going to get one for that and I'm going to roll again because I had one success. And I got two sixes. So I just take my second success and now I will roll for my cunning and I feel like I have wasted all my fives and sixes because yes, I am superstitious about my dice and I, <laughs> I, I have to now roll my cunning. It's going to be a five plus. Here I go. And I got a five. Okay, so there we go. I passed it. I did the sidestep. I went all around the trap and I heard some clicks, but they didn't uh, snap me in. So I'm gonna take that as my success. And again, I have the choice. Do I wanna bed down? Do I want to um, heal, which I don't have any damage yet, but I can bed down or I can press forward with the two. <sighs> Gosh, you know what? If I move forward now, I am doing okay. Um, uh, I can prevent this. I can do a test to be entirely re-rolled. I have this event. I have the two close cards, so I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it because I want to just get this and get out of here. Perilous bridge. Oh boy. So I walked across that uh, a super cool hidden trap, and now I'm at the bridge. This old bridge looks um, too weathered and crumbling. Um, time to go... Uh, uh, um, Time to go across to the other side. Yu, 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 yu. Glory won, but I need to pass this with two successes of four or higher. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Three dice. These dice were good to me. Three dice because it's agility, and I have three dice for that. So let's find out what happens. This is bad. This is so bad. So I'm going to. Haha. Too close. I'm going to play too close. This says. Play to force a test just re-rolled re -rolled to be entirely re-rolled. I need to get one success here or I'm out and I'm on a cliffhanger and I risk everything I've done. It says I can be used on myself. Yes, please. I'd like to be used on myself. I'm going to take all my dice and I'm going to re-roll and hopefully get one, four, or higher. Yes, I did it. I did it too close. It was like I fell and I grabbed that rope and I pulled myself up. I don't think I can do that. But in this world, I can. I got a five and a six. That's two successes, which makes my agility a pass. And I nabbed that artifact. You better believe it. I got, let's see here, three glory. And I got one glory. That's four glory total. I'm going to put these cards on the top of the danger deck. I'm going to get four glory. And I will take my uh, mask of the gods plus the two that were underneath that skull. So now I've got the mask and I've got these guys as part of it. Fantastic. So I've got two artifacts I need to go back to town to sell. Yes, 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 for sure. Now, I think what I might do is play Malaria on me because Lewis is, or Dr. Zukov, he's playing uh, him. He's all the way up here in this icy mountainous region. I'm going to play while I'm in a jungle space during my adventure phase to gain three glory because I'm in a jungle and I'm just going to grab more glory because if I can get a lot of this, I can get more allies and I can get more um, gear and I can get more stuff to go out again to continue adventuring. And you can have up to three allies and three gear and I need to get really souped up because I had a real close call there. That was the end of my adventure phase. And now we're going to move into end phase. No Zeppelin, no villains. Check for victory. I have two fortune. That's it. And then we're going to replenish the artifacts. So let's grab a new one. One here. I'm going to grab this one here. Ooh, nice. This is the Shield of Medusa. It's three danger and it's five. It's five fortune. That is really nice. And again, 
we're not going to worry about this guy down here uh, unless you want to play an advanced play. So I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to put that on green. We're going to draw a location. Here's my location. It is Siberia. Okay, Siberia right there just for the taking. Lewis is just going to walk right over after he clears out Russia if he can get past the cliffhanger and he's going to just nab up this Siberia, this, this shield of Medusa. And now initiative phase. We're back to the top again. Let's do it. Lewis is die over here. I'm over here. And you know what? I just think he's just going to keep that. <laughs> he got a five, so he's going to keep the initiative to start the, the game. And I got a one again. I think that's the third time, but I do get an event card. Here's my event card. It says, I don't think so. Play to cancel any event card or villain event or play to cancel any city card on the roll of three plus on a D6. Okay, interesting. So I'm going to hang on to that. I don't think so. Uh, and I'm going to just hopefully play that at, at just the right moment. So that was initiative phase. We're moving into the move phase. He is not going to be moving away, but again, he can roll and get an event card. So here is his move. He didn't. He's just going to stay where he is because he's going to, he's in the cliffhanger. He can't move away. You cannot move away when you're in a cliffhanger. So I'm now going to roll for me. I got four and I need to, I have one extra movement and I can go across water. If I can get to a nice major city, I can get a plus one on both of those turn-ins. So if I go one, two, three, four, let's do it. So one space across any black line is one, one into the ocean because of my special ability, I'm well-traveled, one up here to the land, and then I have to move one into Paris. So you always have to move into cities, just like you would move across land. So that's my movement, but I don't get to do my adventure phase until he has resolved his cliffhanger. So let's resolve his cliffhanger. He has terrible agility. He's got just two dice, and he doesn't have any flying keyword strengths. Um, so yeah, he's just going to have to roll with two dice and get three, four pluses, which is totally doable. Let's do it. I really wanted to do it. He got a four. That's a success. And he can roll again. Oh my gosh, he's on it. He's doing it. Here we go. He got two fours. He made it. Oh my gosh. He was just gripping the edge of that cliff. Good job, good job. That was exciting. It was so exciting. Cliffhangers are so fun. So now he has this as his fourth. He does get to gather the glory from this card. So he's gonna get two glory. And we're gonna put that back on its danger side. And he's got his two glory here. He's got the four needed successes to gather the Book of Lost Souls. So let's put these guys back here. And he is gonna keep this in his space. Oh, I'm so excited. He's really gonna, he's gonna hopefully be able to trade this bad boy in. Let's put his cards right there. And that's gonna it, that's gonna be it. That's the end of his adventure phase. And now I am in a city. The start of my adventure phase means I have to draw a card from the city. So I'm gonna draw this top card from the city. I'm gonna look at it and it says auction. Place an auction marker at this city. Any hero selling an artifact in this uh, city may sell it at auction by rolling a d6 on the chart below. This is gonna remain in play. So if you roll, you'll get uh, a one, two, minus two fortune than you should have. A three is just the same amount. Uh, four, five is plus two and a six is plus four. This is one of those risky, this is a risky choice. Like. Do you, do you press your luck? I'm going to keep the card down here and I'm going to take this auction tile and I'm going to put that auction tile right there and it's going to go in Paris. And now you can see that there is an auction happening there. You don't have to do it. And since I have two, I'm going to risk one of them and then just play the other one out. So while I'm in the city, I can do any buying and selling at any point in my turn. At this point, I've played my city card and now it's got the auction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sell the mask of the gods for five plus one because I'm in a major city. So I'm gonna sell this over here. I'm gonna set that to the side and I'm gonna get six fortune. So good, I'm now at eight of my necessary 15. 
um, to win the game. And then I'm going to sell the ring of the golden mummy. And I think I want to, I want to do the auction. I want to risk it. Um, I am going to get plus one for selling it in a major city. Um, but I, uh, I think I'm just going to risk it and roll a die and see what I get. Maybe I'll get a four, five or six, which is exciting. I got a five. That means that I get to have plus two fortune on top of what I'm selling it for at auction. Uh, somebody really wanted to have, or I guess for, yeah, me, someone really wanted the ring of the golden mummy. So I'm going to get four, five, six for the auction. And then seven, I'm going to get one more for the major city. So I'm going to get that and it's seven. So I'm going to reach in here, grab up uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And if I had eight and that's seven, that means that I have 15 and next turn I can try, unless I get sabotaged, to race back to my home city of New York because I got really lucky at that auction. I, I should not have gotten, I should, <laughs> I mean, it was a risk. It was a gamble. Uh, but there are cards out there that say when people go to sell things, you can stop it or you can turn their fortune into glory or you can do things. And so that's where these kind of sabotage cards come in if someone has that opportunity like I did. So that was me selling all of my artifacts at either auction or just regular selling. And now I've got all this glory. I've got five, I've got 15 glory. Now here's how this works. I'm going to spend five glory, put it over here, and I'm going to draw an ally card. So this is my ally card, and it says mechanic. Oh, cool. I have a driver, and now I have a mechanic. Roll plus two adventure dice on any tech test, and I also have a plus one combat. This is amazing. So now I've got two allies. I can have up to three. And then I'm going to spend five of these guys, five more glory and I'm gonna buy a gear card. So allies and gear are both five, and you just flip it over and it looks like I got a machete. Yes, this is a gear hand weapon blade. It's plus one combat. It says roll an extra die and choose the highest when trying to find an adventure in the deep jungle. I was just there. I was about to say I needed a machete. I said I needed a big sword, but I can't remember machete. Um, but this would have helped me down here in the deep jungle, but it still could because I'm gonna come probably down to the Amazon jungle and explore down there and that's deep jungle. So this is really great for uh, finding locations, but also having a nice weapon. And then I have five left, and I will show you that there are common items that you can buy when you're in the city. There are maps that allow you to redraw danger cards or to ignore terrain icons. This is cool. It's one to buy, and you'll always see in the top corner there's the cost to buy it. There's also a torch that costs three, and it allows you to, uh, in fight rounds or tests, to re-roll a fight die or an adventure die. Um, Fantastic, and then you find out, does your torch go out or can you use it again? And these are the kinds of items that you will um, activate at the beginning of each round after you use it one time in the middle of the game. So you can still use these items as long as you have them. Supplies cost four and you discard any time um, to fully heal. I, I mean, I, I was really fortunate to not take the damage, but my characters didn't want to go into fights. And perhaps I, I will show you a fight just to show you one. Um, there's revolver, ropes, rifles, book of lore, adventure plane. There's just some amazing uh, 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 common items in here that you can also buy. But if you go into a situation where you have to start discarding things like uh, um, uh, glory, it's, it's nice to keep some with you so that you can discard them instead of discarding allies and gear and things like that. So I'm going to hang on to what I have right now, and that's going to be the end of my adventure phase. And then let's do the end phase. We're going to replenish the artifact, and I will say, I'm going to do this. We're going to replenish this, and then I'm going to go into hopefully a fight. I'm going to walk him over and do one fight, and then I will uh, wrap up wrap wrap everything up so it looks like we've got the crown of atlantis for three danger and you get four fortune it looks really freaking cool i like it and then i'm gonna put this guy here and we're gonna find out that location where is this artifact it is in the serengeti okay fantastic there we go we've got 
We've got that down there. All the artifacts are like over here, but fortunately I walked up here and now I can kind of mobilize myself to get to other places. Initiative phase, here we go for initiative. I mean, roll a six, roll a one, not a surprise. Lewis keeps it. I grab the event card, gear up, play on any hero to allow them to immediately draw a gear card. I think this is this is me playing a, a little silly here, but you can see how these cards work really well for the cooperative game. If I draw a card, then I can give other players gear cards. In a competitive game, you are not going to be giving anybody any of those things. So I'm going to take this gear and I'm going to add it. I have a machete and now I've got driving gloves. So it's going to help me on driving and flying tests. And then once per sneak test, uh, you can re-roll a single die. That's cool. That is really cool. I am loving these gear cards. They're amazing. Okay, now for movement, we're going to roll for movement. He's going to go one space is all he needs to go, but he got to draw an event card. And it says, place a mobster thug, play immediately into two random cities on the board, and then we're going to reshuffle the deck. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so let's get the mobster thugs, and we're going to find out where they go. Sometimes the events do this. We've got Western Europe is one, so let's go here. Oh, that's right in the location where I am, but not. I'm in the city. I'm not out in the country. And then the next one is South Africa. And we've got down here another one of those guys down in South Africa. And then we would shuffle our events back into the deck. I've got a handful of them over here. There we go. I've got those event cards. So we're going to go shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And we're going to do this guy. Wow. That was really interesting. And then... I am going to see if I move. So I'm going to move. And the second I leave Western Europe, I have to fight. So three. Now I'm going to step out of Western Europe and I'm going to engage in a fight with this mobster. And the fight with this mobster ends my movement immediately and I engage out of turn or out of sequence with a fight. So let's grab the mobster card. It is this one right here. We're going to put this down on the board and it says glory three, fight dice three, health four. Now there is a way to escape if you want to try to flee because you're worried about them. You have to do an agility test of five or sixes and you have to get two of them. So let me put this card out here because I'm going to see what I've got. My fight is three. I do have two more combats because of my machete and my mechanic, and I can take one weapon in with me. So I'm going to fight. This is great. I got some fantastic cards. I get two now. Two more. Sorry. I get three plus my two. So there's my three combat, and then there's my extra two combat. So I'm going to fight, but here's the mobsters. The mobsters have three dice, and they're going to fight over here. And we fight at the same time, one round at the same time, and I will be but probably taking some damage. So let's see what I get. I fight them. Oh man, I took them out. And they fight <laughs> They fight me and got one hit, but that's okay. So here's what happens. So four, fives, and sixes are hits. They got one hit. Let's grab a wound. And it does go straight on to me because I have no defense. So my uh, health is seven. I can take seven wounds or six wounds and the seventh wound KOs me. Um, but it goes straight past me because I'm just a daring photographer from New York. I'm, I don't have any defense. But fortunately, I rolled crazy good to get four fives and sixes, and I have my health. They have four. So these mobsters are done, and I'm going to grab three glory just because I moved into their space. So let's get three glory, add it to my stash. Done. 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 And there we go. And that was just movement. Then we would go into the adventure phase. And because, I, bye bye guy, you, you, you go out of there. Um, and because I'm in a space where there is no um, uh, city, there is no artifact, what I would do is roll a die to see. An enemy is gonna show up on a roll of a one, a two, three, uneventful, and then a four, five, or six, I'm gonna get an event card. So this is a great chance to see that, but, He's first. He would go on his adventure first. So without going on that adventure, I'm just going to roll that die and see what my up three uneventful. So my, my whole turn was moving out of Paris and then going into Western Europe and running into a mobster. I mean, imagine that. And that was kind of 
kind of my round, kind of my turn. But it did prevent me this turn from making my way back to New York to turn in all of my fortune so that I could uh, potentially trigger the end of the game, which is really, really good for uh, Lewis over here who's playing Dr. Zukov. So this is going to wrap up my run through of Fortune and Glory, the cliffhanger game. If you want to hear my final thoughts about it, you can hit that I in the top right corner or click the link in the show notes below in five, four, three, two, one.